The kids who watch the original Masters of the Universe cartoons are well into adulthood now, and some might notice that the show isn't quite what they remember from back in the day. Here are some of the bizarre, hilarious, and worrying things that only adults will notice in He-Man's adventures. Being so distracted by all the thrilling action and scary monsters, most kids didn't care about the ideology that fueled He-Man and the Masters of the Universe — capitalism. But present-day parents who are all too used to their kids begging for toys they've seen on TV now recognize that one of the main purposes of the He-Man cartoon was to move merchandise. The show kicked off an action figure craze in the 80s, selling hundreds of millions of dollars worth of toys, and every episode of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe served as its own 30-minute ad. Many episodes would introduce some never-before-seen character who just so happened to be now available in action figure form at toy stores. These characters all seem to possess a unique ability or feature that, conveniently enough, really popped when molded in plastic. Take Mechanic or Buzz Off, for example. Two characters who can only possibly have been conceived so as to make up a shortfall in the merch budget. There's no other explanation. He-Man and the Masters of the Universe was obviously heavily inspired by other shows and movies. After all, a muscle-bound guy in a loincloth fighting monsters in a strange world? That's some straight-up Conan the Barbarian stuff right there. And that's fine. Conan itself borrowed plenty of sci-fi and fantasy tropes, and He-Man does the same. That's just how media works. It's just that adults will notice He-Man's cribbing is especially lazy. He-Man itself is an old phrase that means manly man, while other hastily named characters include a skeleton named Skeletor and a sorceress named The Sorceress. But at least those are mostly innocuous examples. Some of the other He-Man characters have names that, well, let's just say they take on a different dimension once you're all grown up. Isn't that right, Fisto? And when Fisto offers you his hand, boy, that's a big offer! <laughs> there might not be too many people on Eternia, but there are clearly plenty of gyms, since every single character on He-Man and the Masters of the Universe is in fantastic shape. All of the male characters are as ripped as professional bodybuilders, with enormous muscles covering each of them from head to toe. The women, meanwhile, fit right into the hugely unrealistic 80s standard of beauty. With the battle of good versus evil that constantly plagues Eternia, it's hard to imagine how the men have four hours a day to lift weights, or how the women fit in the Pilates, yoga, and aerobics they must be doing on the regular. Regardless, the men and women of He-Man and the Masters of the Universe like to show off all that hard work, and pretty much everyone wears incredibly revealing clothing. Except Orko, of course. But that would be kind of weird. According to Masters of the Universe lore, He-Man is the most powerful individual in existence, and he's got plenty of powers and tools that have helped him reach that status. The power of Grayskull, for one, as well as brute physical strength, and the Power Sword, a much-coveted Excalibur-like relic. Despite those gifts, however, He-Man is actually surprisingly wishy-washy. Most likely because the show's non-serialized nature means things always have to get back to normal by the end of each episode. As a result, He-Man never really uses much of the power afforded to him. He always lets bad guys get away, including Skeletor, who's pretty much the king of the bad guys. Since he knows he'll be back to fight Skeletor another day, He-Man always allows him to flee back to his headquarters from which he can continue his campaign of terror. The show's hero could easily make life better for the people of Eternia by ending his war and killing Skeletor with the power sword the first chance he gets. But then there'd be no more show, would there? Having dominion over a whole planet, or even the universe, is no easy feat. And not even an evil, all-powerful sorcerer can do it alone. Skeletor boasts a huge crew of powerful servants, all loyally devoted to helping their boss destroy He-Man and take over Eternia. But Skeletor is so evil that he doesn't even appreciate how baddies like Beast Man and Evil Lin lay everything on the line for him day after day, risking life, limb, and more in service to this angry, cackling skeleton. He's forever unhappy with the performance of his underlings, mainly because they never manage to defeat He-Man or complete the task he sent them to do, and he always happens to let them know it with a threat of violence or a withering put-down. Why do I surround myself with fools? Even the robots are smarter than you! 
Skeletor best be careful. Best case scenario, his put-upon employees flees to He-Man's side and reveals all kinds of secrets to Eterna's hero. Worst case scenario, they unionize. And then Skeletor's really in trouble. Even today, animation is a labor-intensive and expensive craft. And things were even tougher back in the early 80s, when He-Man and the Masters of the Universe aired. Production company Filmation churned out 65 episodes per season, and the crew had to find some shortcuts to keep things running smoothly. Kids with no frame of reference wouldn't notice, but adults with a cynical eye will easily spot the show's cost-cutting measures. The same handful of music cues are used over and over, and so are a number of animation sequences. How many times do we see He-Man and Battle Cat running or walking, the basic animation of their steps repeated for a good chunk of screen time? And of course, at least once per episode, Prince Adam is going to step in front of Castle Grayskull and gradually transform into He-Man. It's a good lesson for kids. Always recycle. Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite stuff are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.